busy schedule. And, um, you know, you told me to do this. Did you say a four hour workshop? Yeah, no. <laughs> Can't get, we'll I wouldn't do that to anybody on a Monday. Yeah. But, but uh, well, I'll let you start it off. Yeah, well, Scott County, of course, in partnership with the uh, city of Norton and the uh, town of Big Stone Gap, welcome you to the How to Airbnb workshop. We know this is, you know, uh, up front, a lot of people are getting into this now. And, you know, we have uh, already have one or two in the county. And we expect to grow that, and we hope the other counties, Wise County, uh, sees the same growth as, as we're seeing here. Uh, people are looking for a, a new place to stay. They always look for a new place to stay, and that's why it's important to talk about this. So it's great to have uh, Virginia, Virginia Community Capital and uh, Miss Sandy Randolph as a partner, and also the Small Business Development Center. And we have Becky O'Quinn Purdy. I hope I pronounced that last name correctly. So. Anyway, we we have these two. If you have questions about small business, I encourage you to talk to Becky and uh, any questions about Virginia Community Capital and what they can do as far as loan or anything, please ask uh, Sandy. And she may refer to you refer you if it's a loan or whatever to somebody else, but they do have some funding available as well. So Sandy, take it away. Well, I tell you what, Becky, why don't uh, I, uh, you take a moment and tell folks what's going on in a couple of weeks uh, that they might want to take advantage of here uh, in Southwest Virginia. Sure. Um, on September 14th, the Southwest Virginia uh, collaboration of all the uh, small business development uh, centers within Southwest West Virginia will be having a small business conference uh, from nine to noon. There will be a special guest speaker, Eric Pages, that morning that'll talk about the importance of entrepreneurship and community. Uh, and then several breakout sessions, such as information on taxation, um, hiring and HR, selling on Amazon, uh, tourism resources, doing business with the government and other small business resources. So uh, we invite all of you to join us that day. Um, it's free of charge and lunch will be free as well. And then that afternoon, we're doing an Entrepreneur Express workshop too, if you're looking at not only just starting a business, but also expanding a business in Southwest Virginia, and you want to tap into resources, we'll have someone there with the tourism um, industry. Of course, Becky uh, and her partners will be there from the SBDC. Uh, we'll have someone with People Incorporated and a few other partners there. So if you can come, um, uh, we look forward to sharing that with you. So let me bring up my presentation. Um, and welcome. My name is Sandy Ratliff. I'm with Virginia Community Capital and probably some of you all may have seen me over the years in Southwest Virginia. I've been working in economic and community and small business development for over 30 years. I started in kindergarten um, uh, and so glad to continue helping businesses tap into resources in, in Southwest Virginia. Um, just a little bit about who we are. Uh, if you are not familiar with um, Virginia Community Capital, we are a community development financial institution focused on three areas, and that is impact, lending, and investing. We started in 2006 with the help of, at that time, Governor Mark Warner, who saw a need for um, uh, gap financing uh, to help businesses of all sizes in Virginia, and he helped us come up with the first $15 million to form Virginia Community Capital, and since then we've been able to do about 1.86 billion in impact and loan support um, and creating jobs and revitalizing downtowns in, in Virginia, and we're proud of that. Um, whoops. Um, talking just a quickly a little bit about our lending program so that you understand what we do. We do uh, real estate lending. That's everything from affordable housing to multi uh, tenant uh, investing property. We also have a, a grocery food access program. It's hard to believe in Virginia that we do have food deserts in, in Virginia. Um, same way with Southwest Virginia, where people do not have, have access to fresh foods. And we do have a loan program and assistance program, thanks to their friends at the Virginia Department of Agriculture that can help with that. We also have solar energy programs to help if you're looking at, at changing and uh, diversifying. And then we also do small business financing, everything from debt financing, equipment, working capital, um, tenant improvements and that type of thing. 
our, our loan structures, we're not really in the market to compete with banks, but what we look at is how can we help that community and the impact that that, that providing that financing can make in that community. And actually, we do anything from 150000 to, I think we've up to over $7 million now in financing that we can do uh, for loans. And we are an SBA lender and are uh, one of the top five in Virginia that provides SBA lending. Uh, one of the other things that we do, especially on my team that I represent uh, with the Community Innovation Services, is we do a lot of uh, small business assistance uh, and community support. We do that in different ways from one-on-one -on -one TA to providing workshops. And we do, we have a workshop about every other week somewhere in Virginia. And if you've never attended one of our new knowledge sessions, those are those happen about every two weeks um, that we stream those. Uh, they are a webinar and you can learn everything from fresh food financing. Uh, back in the spring, we did a series on QuickBook uh, hands-on from a CPA. We're also doing one in September on your logo, why, how important that is and, and to make your mark. So if you're ever looking for um, workshops or learning, we have over 170 workshops available on YouTube. Just go to YouTube and look up new knowledge and you will find that there. So why are we talking about um, Airbnb? Well, it's probably one of the biggest uh, in the nation now and it's allowing folks to take vacant properties that they may be just sending, sitting out on their paying taxes on them to where they can turn that into a revenue generating. And there's a lot of people doing it. There's over 4 million hosts worldwide as of last year, or, uh, uh, yeah, this year, that are hosting properties throughout the world with over 5.6 million listings. So you're not the only person out there, but I can tell you that we need more Airbnbs in Southwest Virginia. Because when I talk to folks that have an existing Airbnb, they're just covered up. They cannot, um, uh, sometimes they just have to take a weekend off and say, I'm not renting it off and just take it off Airbnb just to give them a little break. But there's over 14,000 new hosts that join uh, the platform each month. That's as of uh, 2021. But if you wanna rent out your home, rent out a room, a uh, private room, however you wanna do it, people are even doing um, uh, and Becky can say this, that are using uh, uh, RVs and turning them into uh, Airbnb properties. And some folks will even take it to the campground that you're wanting, set it up for you. You, you enjoy your weekend getaway and they'll come and pick it up. So what better do you need? So it's all in how you interpret and how you want to do it. Why are we doing this and considering this in Southwest Virginia is because A, it's an it's a, a opportunity for our, our small businesses and our citizens to generate some new revenue. Again, vacant property, you're paying taxes and you're not getting anything back out of it. This is your opportunity. Um, it, it creates two um, housing and rental options for our communities. You know, we are um, have a lot of rural communities uh, that we serve and that people that are traveling need places to stay. And it's not just, we can't pick up the phone and say, Hampton Inn or Holiday Inn, could you put in a hotel in this area? It's just not feasible. But allowing folks to enhance their pro existing properties and turning that into rental property is, is really a, a good way to look at it. Um, just a few tidbits. You can read this. And by the way, after this session, um, I'll be happy to send you my slide deck that you can have access to it. Um, and as I say, I'm recording this um, presentation to have available for those that missed the, the session or if you want to look at it again. But, you know, one of the things that people like about Airbnbs, it's a lot cheaper sometimes uh, in some places than a hotel is. Um, you know, you there is risks whenever you are allowing someone to rent from you, or damage to your property and so forth, but that's something that you're gonna to have to weigh in about. Um, uh, uh, Airbnb hosts and guest communities generated over 117 billion in estimated direct economic impact across 30 countries in 2019. That's pretty impressive compared to just a regular hotel. Uh, and the average nightly price is around $80. Um, and 
again, it's allowing you to generate revenue. And basically the only cost that you have through Airbnb is they take a 3% um, off the host payout. Uh, and that's what they get. Um, just an example, and this is the latest stats that I could find on the impact of Airbnbs in Virginia communities. But this is an example of uh, in 2018, over 750,000 guests stayed in 40 Virginia uh, counties. And since I live in Washington County, just to, I wanted to see what that did, uh, what we saw. We had over 7,000 guests in 2018 stay. That provided over 5,500 um, annual supplemental income to those folks that had Airbnb properties. And again, you have to make that decision, but look at the opportunities that you have. And Airbnb host communities earned nearly $104 million in supplemental income in 2018. And I would say that that is probably um, uh, risen quite a bit since 2018, just how, the, how it goes. Um, just to show you the impact on Southwest Virginia, um, there is a source that I'm going to share with you called AirDNA that you can find information. If you are starting a new Airbnb or you're considering is it time that I need to change my rates and so forth? Uh, you can go there and see what the average daily rates, occupancy rate and the monthly revenues on properties in by zip code or by um, uh, city and state. But here's an example in Wise County, um, they have the average daily rate is $103 with about a 65% occupancy rate. And you can see the monthly revenue uh, John mentioned uh, before we got started uh, in Gate City, there's an Airbnb. The average cost there is $125 with a 71% average occupancy rate. And that's a pretty darn good rate if you look at it. Um, and the monthly average revenue is almost $2,000. And you can, you can read, so I don't have to go through all of there, but hopefully that's given you an idea of the potential and opportunities that you have um, as an Airbnb property owner. And by the way, we do have everybody, the session um, uh, closed for um, that we don't hear you or see you, but if you've got a question for me, please post those in the Q&A section and I'll be happy to address those or send me something in chat. And as I mentioned, a great resource to find out information about Airbnb is um, AirDNA. It's, you can just sign up. It's free and you can look up information, uh, especially I highly recommend this if you are considering uh, getting into um, properties on Airbnb that you can kind of idea of the rates and um, what you can expect when you're trying to figure out if this is the right for me and if I can generate enough revenue, depending on how much debt you have on that property and your um, um uh, when you're enhancing that property, you can get a judge on that, but it's pretty interesting information, but it's a great resource and you can sign up and they'll send you monthly a market review so you can get an idea of how the industry is growing, if it's leveled out um, uh, or if it's uh, going down. Now, how it works as an Airbnb a property owner, uh, when you set up your uh, your property on there uh, and you start booking it as a host, uh, Airbnb will take 3% commission on every one of your bookings. Um, and there's also an additional fee that the guests pay and that can be anywhere from six to 12%. It depends on where you're located and how it's set up. And uh, there's just a lot of great ways uh, and why you should look at Airbnb, especially in Southwest Virginia, how we're growing in um, with tourism development. We've got the new casino coming. Uh, Was it next week or week after is uh, uh, Rhythm and Roots, uh, then followed by the race. There's just a lot of opportunities that you can uh, make some money. And um, hopefully you need to, to consider those types of things. Now, someone that has had great success in a very rural area is Eva Belay, and I don't know if you know her. Eva um, and her husband used to have a uh, outfitter business, a kayak business in Mendota. She has since sold that off, but she still has her Airbnb. 
and it stays very busy. But um, uh, I wanted to share, and I hope this will work, uh, a little video that Eva shared her experience of why she got into it and what surprises she found after uh, starting a, an Airbnb. So good luck. My name is Eva, and um, I live in Mendota, Virginia, and I have an Airbnb there. I've had the structure. It's a standalone um, garage apartment, actually. So it's detached from our house, and it's been on the property for 15 years. It was a caretaker's cottage at one point. Um, and then um, in July, I decided to try my hand at um, Airbnb. I never dreamed anyone would come out to Mendota, Virginia and stay with me. But I thought, I'll give it a try and see. And I was very pleasantly surprised. The One of the most fun things about having an Airbnb versus getting that payment after they check out is meeting the people and learning why they come. Um, it wasn't for the same reasons that I thought they would come. Since we have a river outfitter, I thought that I would get guests because they'd want to kayak and stay at my property. And that's happened a few times, but more likely they're staying at the property and they learn about the kayaking, which is different than I thought it would be. But um, the people, they all have different motivations. We're 17 miles from a grocery store, and I thought that would be a real detriment. And it probably is in terms of volume. But a lot of my guests are looking for that out of the way place, that it's quiet. Uh, one of my favorite guests was working on a cookbook. She needed it away from her, her children and her family, and she came down for two days and worked on a cookbook. Uh, another young lady came and worked on her thesis. Um, other people, they, they're they just motivated to give an opportunity to someone in our area who's um, trying to do something different. Well, I had a slight advantage because I stayed in an Airbnb, Airbnb and um, I you know, notice what I liked and didn't like. So the first thing I did was I took a long look at my property and I determined what would be the negatives and the positives. The first thing that I had complete control over was cleanliness and I cleaned it from top to bottom. Um, I went under, I made everything accessible and um, uh, put notes on where to find things. Um, instead of just having a bunch of things under my kitchen sink to wash dishes with, um, I organized them, I put them in baskets, uh, I labeled and made it easy for my guests to find how, how, to, how to scrub a pot, uh, what dish detergent to use in the dishwasher, what to use in the sink, those types of things. I never assume that they're going to know where something is or find something. So I had to take a long, hard look at the whole property like that, um, focused on cleanliness and organization. Um, the one thing that I that bothered me, it bothers me in hotels and it bothers me in Airbnbs. Everybody wants to watch TV at night. There's nothing to do generally. You want to watch the news or do something. Learning how to use that remote. And I put very clear remote instructions out. Um, I've got them everywhere because that seems to be um, a topic that, especially if there's a man over there, they got to have their TV on. So that's one of the things that I did, just looking at every part of that property and is it clean? What would it look like to a stranger trying to look at it with their eyes instead of my eyes? Um, thinking uh, what would set me aside because I am in a further location than an Airbnb in Bristol. And um, in, in my case, I decided on a limited basis to be pet friendly. Um, also, I decided to market myself as that remote place um, in Southwest Virginia and try to turn a negative into a positive. In our case, we had an existing LLC called Rivercliff Farms that houses my um, Adventure Mendota, the kayaking part. So this just became another leg in that LLC. Uh, we did have to talk with insurance companies and, and get some advice about that. But um, it just became another part of the revenue stream for Rivercliff Farms. So when Airbnb gives me the, the money that I earn, it goes right into that and becomes part of our income. But Airbnb, I think the reason they are successful is they do make it easy for the novice. You, um, In my case, my delay was I wanted to have the very best pictures. I still don't have the best pictures. I, will, I aspire to have better pictures, but that was my delay. In terms of uploading those pictures and writing about my 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 uh, property that I had to offer, Airbnb led me through that process. Um, it was, I had, I had the 
I could be creative in talking about the property, but they led me through the process. It was very easy. And, um, you know, it's a matter of just sitting down and doing it and, and not procrastinating. And then it's so fun when you get your first message and it's a guest who is interested in staying with you and they're inquiring about your property and you realize this really is going to work. Um, also, the payment processing part, very simple. Airbnb takes care of all of that for you. All you see is that deposit going into your account, which is pretty fun. Uh, as you can see straight from uh, uh, Eva, it is an easy process to do. Um, and all you have to do is basically, and I suggest this before you post it, is get everything ready, do all of your renovating that you're going to do, have it looking um, pristine. And as she said on those pictures, which we're going to talk more about that, uh, have it on there. And the other thing that I wanted, and I wrote myself a note as she was talking that I did not want to forget to tell folks is that when you're writing up and describing your property, spend some time, but also take advantage of some of our tourist destinations in Southwest Virginia. For example, I mentioned the racetrack, I mentioned uh, Rhythm and Roots coming up. Um, also, we have got now um, the casino, the Hard Rock Casino, and people are coming into the area. And right now, there's not a hotel on site. So those are the types of things that I would put in my description if people are looking at properties, how far away you are to some of these tourist destinations, and taking advantage of that. But back to it um, is all you have to do is just go to Airbnb, sign up, and um um, people are going to start booking stays with you, and uh, you're going to be seeing that prop that money going into your bank account as you host your property. Um, here's a short video because I was afraid when I go back and forth uh, on a Zoom call on PowerPoint and so forth that I would miss up. So I just recorded, uh, if you don't mind, uh, how you go about setting up a, a property on Airbnb. Setting up an Airbnb account is very easy. Just go to Airbnb Inc, create an account. You can use your existing Facebook account or Gmail account or set up your own. Um, I used, uh, set up a, a new Gmail account just to make things easier and to keep things separated. Just fill in the information and your password and all the other information that they request. And you might want to include there that you don't want to receive marketing messages from Airbnb. That's your decision. After you've completed everything, just simply hit sign up and you go from there. Now, I'm sure John will say something about the um, birth date or the year I put in there, they want but be quiet to about you it. You've read all the information and you agree to their terms. And if you do and you want to proceed, just hit accept. Now, this is where you start populating the information about your property. Is it a house? Is it a room in your home? What type of, of home is it? There are a number to choose from. Pick the one that best describes your property. And is it going to be the entire home? Is it going to be a bedroom in your home? Again, these are all things that you pick out and decide. Knight wants to learn more about your home, how many bedrooms, how many beds are in each bedroom. All of this information, again, is going to go into populating your account to give potential 
stairs, more information about what you have to offer. And I encourage you to spend time on this and make sure you include everything because you may offer something that your neighbor uh, down the street or the next community over does not offer. So take time to make sure you have all of this information completed. Help people find where you're located at. So put your address um, that they can find you in searches if they're looking for a location in Grundy, um, Richlands, Taswell, Abington, Clifton Forge. Make it easy for you to be found because you're going through all this for a reason. Make it easy. Don't make assumptions. I think that's it. Uh, you know, you don't want to put that you go down to the barn and make a left and, and that type of stuff. You want to use actual uh, directions to help folks, uh, especially when you get those city slickers. They're not quite accustomed to our, our roads in southwest Virginia. And usually those are the people that I get behind when I am uh, in a hurry to go somewhere. There's actually three main types of posts out there that you need to consider where you stand in this. Is it somebody that just wants to make a few extra bucks and you've got property you wanna take advantage of? Do you wanna have a stable secondary income source? Or third, and I know some people this, that are serious about Airbnb and that's all they do is their main way of making income is they're buying properties and turn them into um, uh, Airbnb sources. If you are familiar with, with the Abington and you remember the old um, um, uh, mercantile place that was beside starving artists, uh, that old building, well, that is being re 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 renovated. Shoo! And uh, they're going to turn that into an Airbnb uh, right there beside. It's actually Mama Mia's now in, in Abington. So they have that all blocked off and, and gutting that building. And that'll be an interesting one. So you decide, uh, you got to have to decide how much capital you're going to put into it. And one of the things I want to make sure I make straight is if you're going to do this, you're going to have to decide, are you going to be the one cleaning those places? Or are you going to be able to hire a service or a family member or friend that can do that? Because that can be very time consuming, but you have to have that commitment. Because I know for myself, if I go to even a hotel and it looks like it's dirty, I'm look, asking for another room or sometimes I'll just pick up my luggage and go to someplace else because especially in this time, day and age, uh, cleanliness is pretty important uh, to me. Six steps that you might want to consider uh, when you are starting out uh, as an Airbnb. First of all, and we're going to go through some of this, is in the town, uh, county or city that you're going to be locating at, you need to find out all the details about the short-term renting, uh, and we're going to share some on uh, Wise County, uh, excuse me, in Scott County and Wise County in, in a moment. Uh, there are some rules and in, in locations that restrict rentals to 30 days or less. I know in Washington County is one way, but in the town of Abington, you can only stay so long in a property, uh, and then you have to move out. So you need to find out what the code is and what you can and cannot do in your location. And I think the same thing, same thing is uh, in Clifton Forge in that area, because I remember staying there one time at an Airbnb and they, they'd mentioned that they have nurses that are visiting at the hospital and they can only stay so long and sign a contract and then they have to renew that and do it all over again. So know what the code is. Uh, be smart and do your planning at the beginning and not get smacked on the hand or get uh, penalized for something. Also, if your property is in a development and you have an HOA uh, agreement, you need to check all of the details and see if short-term rentals are, uh, uh, are, you can do that in those properties. It's, does it, not everybody will allow that, so you need to figure out that. And another big thing, and uh, uh, Eva will tell you uh, from her property in Mendota, is declutter your space. Make it as simple as it can be uh, to make the place look good, make it easy for people to maneuver in so that they're not uh, hitting that big toe as they're traveling through the, 
the the bedroom or the space and hit that toe at two o'clock in the morning that certainly wakes you up and we've all been there uh, but also make sure your place is tidy um as eva alluded to photography is key uh consider hiring a professional photographer if you can um or go on airbnb and also on some youtube channels and look up about how to go about photographing uh, Airbnb properties and they can get some tips that way but don't just hurry up and put a little picture on there and it be dark in the evening and people can't make it out this is your opportunity those pictures that you put out are the first time people come in contact with your property to look at it so you want to make uh, a, the best first impression so take advantage of that and you're not the only guy out there with Airbnb properties so you definitely want to stick out um list your space um have some uh, photos that are uh, on the inside and the outside do a description of the location you know are you near a river are you, you know close proximity to the interstate uh what makes your space look different uh, and more appealing than than others try to sell the experience is there a walking trail uh within near the property that they can get on uh, make something that stands out and catch, captures people's attention. Um, one of the things that Eva does and others have talked about is having a guest book, but also have information to where you're not getting called every few minutes by someone that's staying in your property. Have everything all spelled out there that they can get to it. Uh, for example, it's good to have the 911 address for your location in case there is an accident that they can quickly get to it if they have to call an ambulance. And, and that's another thing is also have all the emergency contact numbers there handy that they can get to. Um, make it easy to get a list of restaurants or uh, where they can call in food or go eat. Um, have the Wi-Fi passcode close by. And as Eva mentioned, um, have even how to use a TV remote. I think we all have had that challenge, especially when your cable company or your provider changes something, you got to totally relearn that, that remote, make it easy for them. And include things to do, outdoor recreation opportunities, entertainment. Um, and if you, what I highly recommend that you do is, is connect with your tourism director or your chamber of commerce uh, or locations uh, that people like to visit and have information uh, in your property that people know where they can go. For example, in Scott County, when the uh, Carter Foal opens up, if you can get a list of who's playing that weekend or coming up, uh, have that available. Um, if there's something going on in, um, you know, a, a, a fair or uh, some kind of recreational thing, um, could be an ATV race or whatever it is, have that uh, in there, but make it enjoyable and um, hopefully they're going to come back and tell their friends. Again, some, some hints for doing photography and you're thinking, well, I keep going over this. Well, it's important, important, important. Um, clean and declutter, prepare each room. Turn on all the lights in the daytime when you're taking that picture. Shoot from a corner. Pay attention to details to other Airbnb photos. Um, if you can take a panoramic shot and show the view, do it. Figure out everything you do that makes your property stand out and is appealing to others. Now, you're doing this to make money, correct? So you got to figure out what your price uh, for your property is. One of the easiest things to do is just check around, go to Airbnb and look up properties near you. That's one thing. I mentioned about the Air um, uh, DNA uh, website that you can go and look up things. Um, I know when Eva first started, there wasn't much in the way of Airbnbs and she was just going around and calling some of the hotels and folks in other areas, uh, not just in Virginia, but other regional areas to see what they charge for Airbnb properties. So, uh, you don't want to price yourself out, but again, you don't want to leave a lot of money on the table. So be smart about that. And then when you're pricing your rental property, look at opportune times that you can increase the rate. For example, in the summertime, you know, July and August is usually the opportune time where you can get prime rate. 
and we have very all experienced that when the race comes into town uh, that you have to pay uh, full retail price on that. So look at what your competitor's doing, and um, I suggest you call around too, uh, again, and, and see what other people are charging. Now, another thing you might wanna look at is uh, you can do custom length pricing on your properties. For example, if you want to work with that professional that's coming into town during the week to work and then is leaving on the weekend, and you want to do a special price on those, you can. You can put the number of, instead of a one night stay, you might want to be able to allow them a whole um, week to stay. That depends on you. I know, for example, um, Eva doesn't like uh, a lot of nights. Uh, she likes for them to come in, enjoy it, and out in a day or two. Others, um, you know, they may feel differently. They want somebody they can trust. Uh, and they may have them stay for a week or two weeks, but you need to make that out and figure that and be sure you put that in your profile when you uh, set up your account. Other ways that you can set up your rates is Airbnb. Just go to their website and they have guidance. You can look up market rates, comparing hotels nearby. Um, and do, do you want a feature warrant? Uh, do, does your feature warrant higher prices based on versus your neighbors? If if you have a million dollar house and the property down from you is a $75,000 house, maybe you can justify uh, charging the higher rate, but you have to have a reason. I know um, I can be kind of cheap when I'm looking at that. So I have to compare again, what do I want uh, versus features? One thing that I highly recommend that you do is have some type of cancellation policy and have that uh, on your profile that people know. For example, if you have, want to have a super strict 30 to 60 day policy, uh, you need to put that. And that's a lot. A lot, lot of times that's on luxury properties. Uh, you might want to do that again for the race when the Bristol race or Damascus days or rhythm and roots that you have a extended time that you will take cancellations because if you lose out and somebody cancels the night before the race, then your property's empty all weekend. You've lost a lot of money and left money on the table and you don't wanna be that. So you might wanna adjust and look at that as you're setting up your, um, your properties. Uh, refunds too, uh, Airbnb makes it easy, but you, uh, you need to have, uh, when you set up your account, you got to make sure who is managing that account and can take care of everything. If you're not computer savvy, you need to find somebody, uh, a partner, or be able to learn quickly um, because a lot of this is done online through the Airbnb. So you need to be able to manage your account. Um, sometimes when people want a refund for one reason or the other, you may have to work with Airbnb on why. Um, but only an admin can issue refunds uh, to clients. So you got to figure out who's going to be able to do that um, uh, on your property. Uh, one of the things too, Airbnb is just like a hotel, you get ratings. So you want to make that good impression and that you can get a high rating uh, on uh, Airbnb. So um, do whatever you can to always offer uh, excellent service so that you can have those referrals and have good reviews on your account. Again, um, an Airbnb, just like anything that I'm buying, is I always look what other customers are saying um, so that I can figure out is that is that the way I want to go and I want to invest my money. Some things that people don't think about is that relationship with your neighbor on that property. Um, it, you know, some people may think it, I don't care what my neighbor thinks, I'm going to do it uh, with or without them. But that can also cause a big issue and have that experience that your, your um, tenant is going to have for that weekend um, leave a bad taste. So you want to make sure your neighbors understand what you're doing and that they are comfortable and um, have that open line of communication that they can talk to you uh, if something should happen, especially if your property is located uh, away from your residence and you can be in another town or even another state, because I know people that do that, uh, your neighbors are going to be a good friend to you or they could be your worst enemy. So you want to be sure you have a good relationship with them and don't assume um, and 
you know, something can happen. It's totally beyond your control, beyond the neighbor's control, but they have to deal with it. So it's better to have that good relationship and um, easier to react than to respond to an irate neighbor. You don't want to be that person. Now, keep in mind that Airbnb is a software and all software have those bugs. And we've all, if you've used a computer or a smartphone or anything, you, you've encountered that. So don't assume that everything is stays is uh, content uh, on your your properties and on your profile. So make it a habit, uh, maybe once a month or the every Sunday evening is go and look at your account and make sure everything is correct on your profile. Again, this is going to make or break your business because of Airbnb and how it's set up. So you want to make sure everything is correct. Um, on your account and uh, Airbnb does make mistakes so it's not perfect but you want to be prepared that nothing does happen again if you've got questions post those in the Q&A or the chat now I don't know if you've ever stayed at an Airbnb if you have it and you don't really know how to go about this um, a friend of mine recorded this for me because he stays at a lot of Airbnbs. Uh, he's a consultant out of Northern Virginia and comes to Southwest Virginia often and prefers only to stay at Airbnbs. So uh, he's tickled that we're going to, we're helping to get more Airbnbs in Southwest Virginia. And he could be a client of yours someday. But uh, my friend, uh, Mir Patel, will, will share with you about what he, how you go about signing up. Start by loading your browser. Today we are going to book an accommodation or a home as a guest. When you land on the Airbnb page, you have three options. You can either book homes, a place for you to stay, experiences if you want to book an outdoor recreation event or any other experience like a tour, or restaurants. Today we're going to focus on booking a home for this particular tutorial. Start by the place that you want to rent at. We're going to start with Abingdon, Virginia. As I said earlier, you can either book a home or an experience. We're going to do accommodations today. There are 91 homes available in that area. You have a lot of options to pick the dates you want to stay at, guests, home type, price, instant book, trip type, and more filters. We'll walk through each of these categories. Start by the dates. These are the five days that I'd like to book my property. Number of guests. For the sake of this tutorial, let's do two guests, two children, You can see that the number of available homes decreases or is very selective depending on what you choose in terms of the dates and the number of guests. The map is a real time visualization of the properties that are available and listed geographically. Home type. You have the option of either getting an entire place to yourself or a room within a private home. Price is an important consideration. Typically, it says here that the average nightly price is around 198. So I will put my filter at about 200. Instant book allows you to make a request to book a place without host approval, without waiting for host approval. I usually like to ask questions of the host so I don't automatically select this. Your trip type, of course, is for families or for work. This, again, I don't usually fill out. Now, under more filters, you have a large variety of options. You can look at how many beds or bedrooms you want. I'm going to pick two bedrooms, at least one bathroom. Some people can pick two. Super hosts are hosts that have been reviewed quite extensively on our experienced Airbnb homes. 
If you need accessibility, that is an option as well. You can choose specific home features. Most commonly, these are the different amenities available. Almost all of the homes have them. But if you want something very specific, you can pick it right here. You can choose the facilities that you like, the type of property. Some people like houses, others apartments. And since I have pets, I will choose pets. And you can see now that these are my options for places that I can actually book. Let's start by the first one. This tells you a little bit about the property. You can see Robin is a super host. It talks about the check-in. These are all the details. I almost always read about this space to get a sense of where this might be. Uh, one of the things that she talks about in her place is that it's a very locally, right in the middle of everything, right here in Abingdon. And if I'm interested and I like this place, again, it has two separate bedrooms. One has queen bed and two single beds, which is great for a couple and two children. It's pet friendly. The dates that I requested are available. And in all of the reviews, she has very high ratings. You can see she's five star. I like this property. And in order to book it, all you have to do is hit the book button. This allows you to then book the property that you're looking at. You can also do searches of other places in case this is not something that you wanted. If you want something cheaper or in a different part, you can look at this property, for example, by clicking on the map. This is a mountain retreat. And this tells you a little bit about that property. So I always do a research of a couple of different properties and try to identify what's best. Again, it says here, you can read more about the space. It talks about the cost. and all the amenities. Again, it has two bedrooms and enough for multiple guests. Some guests require a one night minimum stay, while others may require more. And if you want, you can read the reviews. It tells you a little bit more about the property, where it might be located, what amenities it has. I rely often on reviews to get a good sense of it. And then when you're ready, you just have to book the property. You can also choose here, to write to the guest. So if you want a little bit more clarity, you can reach out to the, to the host and ask them questions. And the way you do that is contact host. And before you book your property, you say, you ask, you can review what comments they've written, the price and availability, but you can also ask them a question. Hello, Debbie, I wonder if, This allows her to check your message and see if she can accommodate your request. Once you send message, the host will review your message and if approved, will send you a note back and also send you a request to book. If you don't have any questions for Debbie, you can directly hit book now and this allows you to go ahead and book the property. If the, get, the host approves your request, you will get a confirmed booking notice. Okay, there's a couple things that I want to point out before we, we move on. First of all, if you noticed in, when he was booking that, all of the things that people could choose from, not only how many beds, um, those types of things, but if they had a hair dryer, if it had washer and dryer, um, uh, if, if they allow children, um, they should, you know, and if they offer a um, crib or playpen, um, put that in there. Uh, don't forget if your property is, are you going to make it a smoke-free? Uh, you need to push, put that in there in your uh, 
profile if it's going to be pet friendly or no pets. Uh, you need to list that. Um, the other thing is when you set up that account, somebody better be able to access uh, text messages or emails from Airbnb and from properties um, uh, for your properties for people to that want to send in a question and that you can respond to. That's very important. And the faster you can respond, the better. Uh, John might say that I'm an impatient person. Uh, I've been known to that, but when I'm doing something, I want to get it finished now and get it secured and move on. So be sure you spend time and put everything and anything that you can think of on your property that, you, that you're that you going to be offering. Uh, it can be as simple as um, you've got a current coffee maker, so they can bring their own coffee, K-cups, you know, it's whatever their needs are, but be sure you list that and have that uh, available on your properties. Now, as an Airbnb um, member, you also have access to uh, liability insurance through Airbnb. However, I highly, highly recommend that whoever you have your insurance with now that you check into to see uh, what other um, insurance is available to you uh, since you're going to be renting that property out. I think now with the um, popularity of Airbnb, uh, certain insurance companies are um, offering more um, options than they did before, but I highly recommend that you look into it and don't just rely on what's available on Airbnb. Uh, for example, um, a few years ago, someone had a tiny house, and I think this was up in the Allegheny um, uh, Clifton Forge area, and they rented it out. They didn't do their due diligence, and some high school students was graduating and decided they wanted to rent that out, and they had a party. 50 plus people do not fit in a tiny house. The floor cannot handle that, so they did a tremendous amount of damage um, and it was simple because the, the owner of the property didn't do their due diligence and, um, and didn't have enough uh, insurance. So they had to eat a lot. So again, do your research, just like any business that you're starting is have it all planned out and don't assume I'd rather have too much insurance than not enough. So look at it that way, but talk to whoever you have insurance with and talk to other people. Airbnb property hosts and ask them uh, how much insurance and what do they look at too, especially some that's been around and doing this for a long time. You'll thank me later. Uh, local regulations and best practices. Since my friend John uh, Kilgore is here from Scott County, I'm going to let John go over uh, for Scott County what they require and John, when you're ready to go to the next slide, I'll even put that up there. But John, how about sharing with uh, uh, with the folks what uh, Scott County requires. Scott County, in Scott County, there's uh, not a lot of regulations, but uh, they do require a business license in for short stay rental properties in the towns. Uh, there's nothing, there's not, not a business license required in the county. So if it's outside of town limits, then there's nothing required. And uh, we also have the uh, local zoning ordinance. So I would check that and I'll have a contact page here, man, that show you the contact for that. Uh, it is with the county offices, so you would call the county offices, ask for the zoning official, and uh, might have, you know, other permits or whatever regulations that you need to talk to him about as well. But uh, taxes, they vary by the town and the county. So if you want to have contacts for the town, I also have contacts for the county. That'd be the commissioner's office that takes care of the taxes. And then uh, check with the uh, treasurer's office, the uh, building and zone department to ensure compliance on anything as well to make sure. And here's all their contact information. You got the county, then you got the towns of Gate City, Weber City, Nicholsville, Duffield, and Dungannon. So all those are listed there. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to those or you could email uh, me. I think uh, Sandy can share that. Uh, once she shares the slides out to everybody of our email address, if you need anything, or the chamber, Scott County Chamber, we're in the same office. So either one of us will be glad to help you in the way we can. 
Thanks, John. And if you've got any questions, um, you, you've got time while we're still on, uh, you could send a, uh, a question uh, in Q&A or in chat for John uh, as well. And then we also have similar for Wise County uh, and the city of Norton requires a business license for short uh, term, short stay rental operators. Um, there's no business license required outside the town limits. Uh, there are some subject to local zoning ordinance for the, that area. Best practice, and that's no matter where you're at, uh, any city, state, county, town, is reach out and talk, talk to your county or town clerk, treasurer, building zone department, and find out what um, the compliance uh, is. And here's some additional information for locality information for um, Wise County, the Coburn, Appalachia, St. Paul, Big Stone Gap, Wise County, and City of Norton. So you should be ready there. But again, if you are watching this from another area, uh, reach out to the town clerk and treasurer or zoning uh, folks within your jurisdiction just to make sure of what is needed and required. Uh, some safety things you might want to look at for Airbnb. Um, they frown tremendously on any kind of electronic surveillance devices in listings. I think I just saw an article um, a lawsuit that uh, happened uh, a few months ago where somebody had a uh, surveillance uh, device inside their Airbnb and um, the folks that had it rented uh, took issue with that because they did not put it in their listing. So, of course, the courts ruled in their favor. Uh, now, I do have a friend that has an Airbnb uh, in uh, West Virginia in the Bluefield area he does have a like a ring doorbell, uh, but that's only on the outside so that he knows when his guests are, are arriving and uh, leaving. But you need to put that out there and um, review the rules for electronic devices uh, on Airbnb to make sure you're OK. Some marketing tips uh, from other owners that I have asked is, first of all, Airbnb, the website, has a tremendous amount of resources. Reach out and look at those online. Um, how can you stand out in the crowd as an Airbnb because there are growing? The biggest thing I have to say is your photography uh, and how you uh, put your listing in there and what you include. For example, the one that Vivek showed when he was showing um, the owner in Abington, she posted, you know, how close she was to the Barter Theater and some of the other attractions here. And that's the things that you need to highlight in your uh, wherever your property is located. Make sure your all of your Airbnb profile is 100 percent complete uh, before you start listing it and putting going live. Make sure everything is correct. Have somebody, a friend, family, um, look at it too, just to make sure you're all inclusive. And again, share those local attractions. Uh, you might want to even include some major employers because those employers are having people travel for work. Uh, take advantage. Uh, again, ne never leave that opportunity for low-hanging fruit that you can make some money. So anything you can think of, be, be sure you include that in there. And... The last bullet is important. List, uh, share the, your information about your Airbnb property with your tourism office. And again, any of your larger businesses in your area. For example, in Scott County, you've got the Duffield um, Regional Industrial Park. You've got Tempur-Pedic and some of the other larger ones. List that and share that. Send it to the HR manager uh, uh, or someone there in those in those locations to let them know that you have property available. They will thank you and they will send uh, properties or people to you. And then you can also use uh, social media platforms. And when you're looking at that again, how can I be different? Filter out, put descriptions in there to include, as I said earlier, washer and dryer, a pack and play. Is it wheelchair accessible? Do you offer free Wi-Fi? Be sure you have anything that applies, include that. And I know I'm saying sounding repetitive, but it's only because that information is very important to you. You want to make sure you've got a good photo, the best that you can have. 
uh, avoid uh, or limit once uh, those night one night stays offer discounts for multiple night stays to discourage those one night but it's all dependent on you what you can handle or what you can't you got to make that decision um, I shared the uh, ARDN um, DNA website stay up to date with what's going on in the market in the short term stay it's this is your property it's not mine so it's up to you to stay informed uh, and make the best um, out of your uh, of your properties look at market conditions you know you might want to change your rates um, for different times of the year and one of the other things i wanted to mention too is if you notice the difference in those properties that Vivek was looking at uh, to make a reservation, um, depending on the time of year, you might want to change your photos. One of those photos or properties had all uh, winter time, snow on the ground and so forth. That's fine in that time of the year, but it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to have that in July. Uh, you want to have it conform with what's going on. So, um, uh, you know, be smart about it. Uh, some other things that that might be helpful for you uh, in properties again if you have something like an outside uh, um, cameras but you have to put that that you do have surveillance equipment on site another thing that a friend of mine that has multiple airbnbs um, swears by are these smart outlets because when he he can control those from his um, from his smartphone so if he knows someone's going to be arriving at nine o'clock, he can turn that uh, some lamps on or something like that and have that ready or have music playing in the background as they arrive. And he is a firm believer in using these um, keypad deadbolts that can help make it easy. And for you as the property owner, you can change those codes after each person um, leaves and checks out so that you don't have to worry so much about keys and um, and if there's they run into any problem you know you're just a phone call away that can help them so sometimes technology can be a, a big a, well most of the time can be a helpful to you if you have a good internet but just something to think about to use uh, some products that can help you um, we're getting close to the to the end. Some house rules to consider is um, locals must communicate uh, with us before booking. And the reason you do that is if you see somebody that's wanting to book your property and they're in the same town or county that you're located in, just start thinking, okay, why do they want to rent my Airbnb from me? And that goes back to the example of the tiny house in Allegheny County that the um, high school students uh, rented uh, and demolished it. You got to figure out now it's one thing if they're coming for a family reunion and they're booking it, but uh, be smart and don't assume and always question. Uh, I'm sorry we live in a country uh, and that we have to do that, but be this is your property and you want to make sure it's um, uh, it's safe. Um, know your occupancy, occupancy limits uh, on your property at all times. So if you only want um, 10 people in your home at one time, you need to put that in your profile. Same way if you have a self-check-in on your property, write the rules down and also include that when they approve that and they say they're going to rent your property, they have that you that they certify that they've read all your instructions and they know because we know humans and they will push you sometimes uh, to the limit. So be prepared and don't be sorry later. Um, one other thing too, if uh, I mentioned, if you're gonna be a smoke free, you need to have any penalties on there. So if you wanna bundle in fees uh, together with your rules, this is the time to do it. For example, if someone, if it's a non-smoking house and you have somebody uh, obviously that smoked in it, you can jack on a $200 uh, smoking fee per day. Um, and if there's a late charge, uh, late check-in fee, post that in there, but put everything in there, especially if it's a property 
for example, uh, if it's a um, you're in an HOA or an apartment complex and you are renting space out, and if you have uh, assigned parking spots and you have to use some type of a parking tag, you need to make arrangements for that to get to the um, to the folks that are renting from you. And if they should lose that, is there going to be a cost because you'll have to have that replaced? So again, I'm just trying to throw out things for you to consider, but um there you go again look at pre-screening before they stay uh there are a, a thing called a retaliation clause if someone uh stayed with you and had a bad experience and uh they are doing everything that they can to um take basically take your airbnb properties down or do something and you've tried everything uh, Airbnb will get behind you and help you, uh, and you can look at that retaliation clause uh, in the agreement. And in summary, do your homework in regards to the market uh, need by reaching out to your chambers, your, your tourism, your economic professionals, your community leaders to see what's available. Don't forget to identify any tax and regulation requirement in your area. Be smart at the beginning. Get your house and property in top shape before you list it. Reach out. Uh, I can't stress that enough. Finding out from other property owners that have had their hands smacked and butt, butts whooped a couple of times. Learn from their experience. Don't do the same thing that they do uh, did and regret it. And don't be afraid to ask for help. But uh, it wasn't a four-hour workshop, but it was just about an hour. And... Um, I don't see any questions. If anybody has anything, um, you, you know, jot that in in chat or Q&A or here's my contact information and uh, you can contact me at any time and I'll be happy to share with you the slide deck uh, that you can have as well as John's contact information. And if you don't know Becky O'Quinn, um, you're missing out. She's a great resource for folks in um, the Little Wisco and in that part of Virginia. But there's other small business development centers throughout Virginia that are a good resource. But uh, um, is there anything, John, Becky, that you want to add or any tips? Wow, I've got them all baffled. Well, thanks for joining us today uh, or this evening, and I hope it helped and that you are going to move forward on your short-term properties uh, for Scott County and uh, other areas of Virginia. But um, help is available if you need it, and um, uh, I thank you for your time and uh, wish you much success um, in your endeavors. So thank you, and um, have a good evening. Bye-bye.